Um, so it does what you would think intuitively, but it does it in a, in a non-intuitive way. You can also omit the values using the logical not operator, which is the exc exclamation point. And um, R actually has more extensive logical operators than many other uh, programming languages, including Java. Um, for example, R has, you're, you're probably familiar with um, the ampersand, <coughs> excuse me, and as a logical and, and perhaps the vertical bar as a logical or. Um, in R, you also have sequential and, where you have two ampersands. And what that does, uh, normally and, an and condition, the, the condition on the left and the right must evaluate to true. When you use a sequential and, the one on the left must evaluate to true first before it even looks at the one on the right. You, you have more logical operators. Furthermore, it, with R, the not logical operator is extremely versatile and intuitive. You can just put it anywhere you want and it does exactly what you hope it will do, which is good for me. In this case, where it does exactly what you think. It means include all of the rows that do not have the value of grassland for vegetation. Now, note we're using quotes here, even though we've already said that it's a factor. <clears throat> you can't reference, even though uh, vegetation, this is a value of vegetation, and it's really a level, but you, you, can't, you can't reference with the equality sign the level of a factor directly. You have to put it in quotes so it knows what you're doing. So anyway, if I do this, we get all of them except the ones that have grassland for vegetation. Now, you can couple the hyphen with, or minus sign if you prefer, with the which function. And I, I like to, when I show functions in text, I try to always do it like this to make it clear that it's a function. And you'll find that in most of the written material about R as well, just so you know you're talking about a function. So here I'm saying this is a double not, I guess, or double negative. Um, let's do this. If I said worms, which damp or true, we get we get this. We get hmm. See what worms, take a look at the reference to begin with. Worms is this. Yeah, true and false, right. Okay, so that field was true and false to begin with. So if we say worms, which damp or false, you get exactly what you think. You get the records for which is false. If you put a minus sign, it leaves the falses out and hopefully, and it does, it returns the trues. So I, I get confused easily, especially when you start using double negatives. Or you could do the same thing. This would accomplish the exact same thing. Say damp equals false, not. So you get the exact same result. Or what's simpler and something I can understand almost just just simply do it like this without the double negatives. Just say damp is true. That's the, the simplest way is almost always the best. You can try and impress people that you can do complex things, but uh, it'll come back to bite you. And it's okay. So here's another one. So what is this? Let's take a look at this data set. Um, if we, uh, let me pop open that data set. Worms missing TXT. You have this in your folder also. And it would, uh, here, a bunch of files. And fortunately, they sort alphabetically so I can find it. Here it is, worms missing. If we, 
we just open it up. There we go. So you should be able to see this. Same, it's the same file, 20, and it's got NAs. They're missing data. So what, what happens when you have missing data? This is an issue everybody has to deal with, and it's a, it's a, it's a thorny, it's a problem. Well, okay, so it's the exact same file, but we've, we've got missing data. So we're going to deal with that. There are a number of built-in files. Well, we have to read it in first, so let's read it in. And I could have just done that and then popped on it here. That would have been easier. So there we can see it now. And uh, there's, the, there's some missings. Okay, how do, you, how do you deal with missing data in R? Well, there's a number of ways. There's some built-in functions. Uh, the easiest, or uh, one of them, it's not necessarily the NAOMIT. This will just simply, this is a function, and it'll just leave those rows out. So NAOMIT will just filter, it filters the rows, and you can see two, the second row, the seventh row, gone. Or you can... Um, and they exclude does the same thing again to row two and row seven are, are have been excluded complete cases is will look at each row and it will only return uh, as you might expect the the rows that have values that are complete. So it the effect what it return uh, but it returns trues and falses. It's not it's not uh, mimicking the it doesn't return the data. It just simply if there's a, a missing value in that row like row two you get a false or row seven you get a false. So you can couple this with uses as a subscript what this will do it returns this vector of trues and falses here now this is a two-step process and you may be asking yourself well why would I want to do that when I could just simply do it in one fell swoop like this well and that's a good point in this instance you wouldn't it'd be preferable to use just NA omit or NA exclude. And note, you can, as I mentioned before, you can assign this to a new variable. You could, you know, do that to preserve it if you wanted to. But often you're going to be wanting to exclude, um, it, it's often you're going to be wanting to, you, where, where would you use this? You might use this in a more complex expression. It would have a place in a more complex expression where NA omit might not work, might not be appropriate. Okay, what are we doing here? Well, um, uh, darn, darn if I can remember. Let's see here. This is, this is the apply. This is one of the family functions. And what apply does, apply will work with um, data frames. And uh, the second argument of apply refers to the margins, refers to the margins. And you can have two different values. One, one, return, one refers to the rows and two refers to the columns. So what this will do, no, yes, that's correct. One, one is rows and two is columns. So what this will do is it will, let's get my slide, I'm confused. It will look and see Okay, this is what we're doing. In this context, it is actually going to, okay, in the first context, it is, it is being applied to the columns. 
And this part of it is going to return trues and falses. And then we've nested it inside a second apply. This will count them. This will add them up. And uh, let's make sure I told you right. Let's go back to the script and try that. So um, here, let's do this. Uh, data, we do have data, yes. So we can just uh, do this part. Let's see what this returns. This should return trues and falses. And it does, uh, but it does it for the entire data set. Hmm, okay. So we got, it went through the entire frame and it tested each individual cell. And the reason it did that was because we said is in A, but we applied it to column. So it went down, it went through each column. It went down each column. So we're getting, it's converting our, our data set into uh, trues and falses in each cell, depending on whether it's missing. And then this one, the second apply, note we've nested it. In the second apply, this is just simply the first argument. This is the data set. So in the second, it's, it is using what you see on the screen here as the input. And it is going down each column and summing. And when you sum trues and falses, a false is a zero and a true is a one. So what we're going to get is a count within each column of the number of missing values, I hope. And we do. We get one. There's one in the area column, one in the slope column. And if we double check, that appears to be correct. Okay. Um, what else can we do? Um, we can use order and not duplicated. Not duplicated is the same as unique, the unique function. Not duplicated Let's try this one at a time. Okay, so here we're creating a new data set. And um, worm density is a column, and we're just reversing the order. So let's do this. Let's take a look at worms just once more so we can take a look at worm density before we do this and make sure. Okay, so here's worm density. It's the, four, it's the seventh column. And we're going to put it from high to low, and we're going to put that in a new a vector called new. So we look at new, and uh, oh, we used it as a subscript, so we get the entire frame back. But it should be it's sorted right. It's sorted by it's ordered by worm density from high to low. So that's new. So now we have the original data set. Uh, reverse ordered by worm density. And let's take a look. Now this is new. This is no longer worms. Let's take a look in the vegetation column and see what we have. We have uh, repeats. Here's grassland. Here's grassland. Here's scrub. We have repeats. So not duplicated will just return the records for which the value in grassland shows up the first time. So we get, we only get one unique value for each of these. And in every case, it's the first one. Rook, rookery slope was, was this, was the very first grassland. When it encountered this record, it ignored it because of the because of the not duplicated